You are having a one-man show at the Scholar Street Gallery. Can you tell me a little about the show, how many years in the making, and the predominant theme? Yeah, uh, the predominant theme is spirit, right. um, which is the simplest way of defining uh, the overall teaching that I received from Normal. Mm -hmm. um, the show in my art in general is not uh, tradition or legend based. Uh, um, it's quite well known that uh, uh, even though I'm from Thunder Bay and I have a little native blood in me, I'm uh, Scottish and, uh, and uh, what Norville taught me was that spirit is the right of everyone, no matter what their blood, no matter what their race. Uh, and uh, um, so I don't really teach native spirit, I teach uh, the great spirit. And how I teach is the same way Norville did, uh, by painting right. and keeping quiet, except for moments like this interview. Well, as you know, I haven't seen the show yet. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that, and possibly, you know, and and anyone who uh, can make it, I'm sure will will look for that. Um, but what would maybe the the dominant lessons or or uh, things Norvell is saying that we might still see in your work or the connection there? Well, what's the word? Interconnectivity, mm -hmm. um, which is that uh, every part uh, within nature. Um, which includes all things, technology, you know, whatever. They're all connected with one another in an or organic fashion. Um, so the the greatest teaching, the most important teaching, is that we're all connected. Um, what is the spirit? What's the nature of that spirit? It's like glue. The nature mm -hmm. is love, really. The, right. Of course, we package love. So when you expand it and include everyone and everything, including you know the. Uh, darker forces of nature included, but yet at the same time content within the overall vibration of, of love and spirit. Um, the focus of the show, actually, in the centerpiece of the show, is uh, um, an 18 foot by 5 foot, a 6 panel uh, mural called The Great Spirit. Mm -hmm. and uh, um, It's a painting of uh, Marceau in a grand canoe um, on his way to his new adventure. And, uh, and that's why the show um, is, uh, uh, it's the focus of the show. Um, sure. You know, so it's, is, it, is that a legend? No. That's a, that's right. a living, that's a life force. Uh, sure. You know, even in, from the other side, his life force uh, continues to grow here in, on planet Earth. Yeah. I love the native traditions. You know, I love the idea of smoke. I love the regalia and the beads and the trinkets and uh, and the paintings on uh, you know material. Um, in a way, that is the native religion. You know, sure. and uh, um, so I don't reject any religion. My parents were missionaries. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I see them all as being part of the, the greater whole. But religion gets in the way of spirituality and like spirituality itself that word if you just tighten it a little bit and and look at community spirit team spirit the human spirit holy spirit that you mentioned you know all these together are the great spirit yeah you know so i don't even differentiate right. i don't have there's for me there's not a spirit of the rock and a spirit of the tree and i know it's traditional native religion you know that there are many spirits for many different things, but from my perspective, there's one animating spirit that brings it all together, and that's the one to focus on. You know, and so all other options answer to that great spirit. Norval directly instructed myself, Brian, and Carl, yeah, um, as artists. Yeah. We were I, Brian. I, I don't know um, his prehistory. He came before my my time as an artist. Yep. Um, but Carl and myself were both uh, artists. I wouldn't say accomplished artists, but really dedicated artists mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, and Norval took us on, and and uh, of course inspired us and facilitated our vision and and instructed. But you know, of course, you learn more from osmosis than anything else. Sure. Now back in the late seventies, um, there was a great demand for Norval's work at the time. Um, there was two uh, different uh, dealers carrying his work and there was a, such a demand. Um, he had so many paintings that he was doing and at that time, because people do question why his protégés doing paintings or, or what, whatever happened back in those years, but um, 
uh, Norval would point out. Um, we'd have, he'd have 40 paintings going or whatever, and he would go from spot to spot. He'd put a red dot on this picture and a green dot on that for basically for speed, you know, and um, and we would uh, finish off those colors in the particular area. But, you know, these were his drawings, were his lines, you know, the whole thing. Right. And of course, he liked me to do backgrounds, wash backgrounds and things like that, and you know, and, and so there are paintings that we have done together, mm -hmm. and we've always been very forward about that. But that was just that time, and uh, sure. you know, beyond that, uh, um, that does not, of course, call the work into question at all. That's not what we're calling questionable works, as no. you know. No, we're talking. Sometimes about it gets painted with one big brush, and yeah. they go, "Well, these guys know how to paint like Morisot. So they're his proteges, you know." Right. But you know, that's who we answer to. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, you know. Uh, the people that aren't answering to that, or think yeah. they're not answering to that, yeah. those are the ones in basements, you know, yeah. creating these things. But the ones that That's are answering right. the spirit, we have a responsibility here, and you know, and yeah, Norval like was like a, was like a mother and a father at the same time when it came to art, you know. Right. So he, you know, he was right on top of the work he was doing. He really cared about it, you know. He was very direct about it, about what he was doing, and a hundred percent in control all the time. There's, yeah. no, there's never a, a point when you know, painting with Norval where he was not 110% in control of his work, you know, so so I think it's all going to work out just fine. Turn I, I think you're yeah. right. Um, would you like to uh, give your take on what Norval's legacy should be and how your woodlands Google will help to move that forward. Would you like to say any more on that, or do you think you yeah. covered that? Okay. Yeah. First of all, the Woodland School, yeah. which is a term that's widely used and accepted, yeah. was a, a media-created term. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Norval himself, uh, when he brought um, brought myself into the fold and whatnot, his vision was of developing a school called the Thunderbird School mm -hmm. of Shamanistic Arts, which would be uh, based upon beautifying the world. Um, you know, sometimes there's a, uh, in art there, there are schools where you are educated, and there are schools in the same sense as, as the school of salmon, for example, where you move together, where right. a similar theme entices a group, you know? Good point. So the Thunderbird School is, is much more natural. It's not some sort of educational facility, but of course education is, is a big part of it. But we, you know, spirit educates, you know, by its very nature. You know, you end up in situations and you, and you learn, you know. So uh, the Thunderbird School uh, is, a, is really being launched now. I consider it a part of the Norval's legacy that, that he required, that he demanded that this that this continue and that this expand, um, whether he was involved or not. And uh, um, so Brian Marion and myself um, have publicly vowed that we will see this come to pass, and and uh, we're taking steps to uh, to uh, see that happen. Now, uh, with regard to the, the Woodland School artists, um, mm -hmm. there are many many artists, and some of them really great, and some of them whose work actually uh, sells for more than Marvels, right? mm -hmm. you know. And, yeah. Uh, rightly or wrongly, I mean, none of them would, would you know, consider none of these artists, Daphne O.J. or whatever. They all consider Norval to be the gold standard, right. you know. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, some of them have really controlled their careers and they've, you know, developed a beautiful uh, artwork that all has its merit. And they have not been instructed by Norval. So who instructed them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I mean, that's it. We're following spirit. That's why my new show is called Spirit. It's not called Native Spirit or Holy Spirit. You right. Know? It's just right. spirit. And uh, it's spirit that's guiding us, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I answer that? You did. Thank you. How would you like to see the vast number of questionable works cleared up? I know you, you have mentioned this to me. I'd like you to tell others what, you, what your thinking is on that. Okay. Um, I love art history. I loved reading art books in my younger days. And uh, one thing I learned is that the great artists uh, carry with them um, just a huge school of collectors and novice artists and you know uh, storekeepers, galleries, whatever. All this is 
um, is a manifestation of their great power. Mm -hmm. So um, Picasso had real problems, not himself, but the environment, the, the industry of the Picasso art market. Dali is similar. He didn't do a lot of paintings, and yet there are many more paintings on the market than what he created. So first thing I'd like to say is the hallmark of a great artist is that in the world of art, which is a world of illusion to some degree, you know, it's a world of fantasy, there are fantastic things going on both ways, mm -hmm. on the dark side and on the good side. I mean, there's money to be made here, and uh, um, forgers, um, I'm, uh, I've seen paintings that I know Norville didn't do, but they're signed by him. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen those with my own eyes. For my own case, I've decided uh, not to speak against, mm -hmm. um, but to uh, speak for. So I am for uh, the cream rising to the top. The, great, the greatest Morisos, like for example, um, the beautiful piece in the Museum of Civilization, uh, um, I mean, those are just stupendous works of art. They cannot be duplicated. Um, Norval's uh, ability to cross-index colors, to take two opposite colors and put them together, and two more opposite colors and put them together, and get all four and put them together, you know, that comes right out of the nature of the man. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to just, you know, have a look at a Morisot book and then start whipping up a painting that looks like that and then suddenly they got pinks with greens that aren't mixing properly and different tonal levels and tonal qualities. But uh, it's, it's tough when there's thousands of pictures out there and, and, and people that do own these, some really uh, fine people who had no idea have ended up, you know, going to auction houses and buying something that was really not not credible, but um, yeah. who's to say that it's not? And I know there's a, you know, there are wars going on right now, but I'm telling you that's just, the, that's the balance of energy for the great lightness of his power as it begins to spread across the world. And, mm -hmm. and one thing people don't realize is even though Norval really is probably the most popular artist this country has ever had, he's been somewhat trapped within this country. Mm -hmm. He hasn't got the world recognition that, that really he deserves. So right. for my own case, I believe in a positive movement, movement forward in reinforcing the ones that we know are, without are a his. doubt, are, yeah, yeah. Are, are his, and uh, let let the rest uh, um, sift through. Yeah, it's only gonna, it's going to be time and whatnot, and whatever underhanded agency has been producing um, Forge Works has really been undermining so many good people that end up not being sure and of. The work that they have, and you know, and then they have to come to people like myself or Kinsman Robinson Galleries, you know. Yep. So I find it embarrassing when I, someone comes up to me and says, "I would, you know, here's a Morisot I bought. What do you think of it, or whatever?" And you know, and if I'm not sure of the quality, of it, I'll just say it's an inferior Morisot. But um, it's not my job to tell people that this is a fake and this is a real one. But you know disgust me to, to see it uh, surfacing, but on the other hand, it's just, it's beautiful because the greatness of Morisot's work will, can, will be reproduced, it will be shared around the world, and the top thousand paintings are just, right. I mean, how many paintings can an artist They're going to come. No, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. We all know that through art history. Only the creme de la creme are still with us because time takes care of the junk, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah.